Hey everyone, my name is Keely and I'm the owner and creator here at Soy and Shea and thank you so much for joining me for another soap making video. Today's video is a little bit longer than most but I am taking you from the very beginning of my soaping process right through until the end of cutting it. I've had a lot of requests from people to do a soap which would be suitable for young skin um, and to do just a pure olive oil soap. Now I wanted to do a little bit more than that so I'm going to start by infusing my olive oil with some calendula petals. We'll also be adding in some oat milk. I also show you how I line my slab molds and then we go right the way through to making the soap and cutting it. So grab yourself a cup of tea and come along and watch how I make my oat and calendula olive oil soap. Okay, so we're going to do this soap video very differently to how we do all of the other ones. I have got the um, pot from out of my slow cooker here. And the first thing we're going to do is infuse some extra virgin olive oil. Now, I'm going to use the extra virgin because I want this to have all those benefits. Normally, I use classic olive oil because the extra virgin is quite a dark colour. And I find that just interferes with the colour of the micas. But for this soap, we're not adding any colour. And I really want the benefits of this olive oil. So I'm going to get, we're going to go, my mould holds 3.1 kilos of oil. But I'm actually going to do 3.2. And you'll see why in just a moment. Alright, so I have my oil now weighed out. The next thing I'm going to add into here is some calendula petals. And this is why I've actually gone over what I um, actually need because these petals are going to absorb some of that oil and I'll probably also lose a little bit of the oil, um, yeah, the oil from it actually sticking to those petals as well. But I want this calendula in there to help give the oil the properties of calendula which will create a nice soothing bar. I'm going for about 100 grams in here. In fact, no, we might go for about 75 because that's looking like a nice amount. No, we will take it up to 100. I'm in an indecisive mood today, I think. So let's take it up to the 100 grams. And what I'm going to do is just push them under the oil and make sure that my oil is going to infuse. Now I tend to do a heat infusion of my botanicals rather than doing it that really patient way of putting your oils in a jar and then sitting them somewhere warm for a few weeks. Two reasons, one because that is a patient way of putting it in a jar and waiting for a few weeks and quite often I want the oils yesterday sort of thing. The other reason is because if I try and do that sort of real gentle way of infusing in the summer months I always find I end up with mold in my jars and it's just a waste of oil so I always do my um, sort of infusing of oils in a slow heated method because I know I can get those oils quicker and I know I'm not going to be growing any mold on those botanicals over those few weeks so I don't get any wastage there. Alright, so what I'm now going to do is pop this into the base of the crock pot, the warming part, and I'm going to leave it on low for about four to six hours today so it can infuse really nicely. And then I will leave it overnight to cool down before I drain all of these petals out of the oil. Okay, so the oils are doing their thing now and what I'm going to do is prepare my lye water solution now so it cools down to the right temperature. So once the oils are ready, I can start making the soap. And I'm just going to push that back a little bit and I have here my little sheet which I get from off of Soap Calc. And let me see if I can zoom you in. Okay, so I have got my soap calc sheet here and I have actually put in the normal amount of oils that I use, which is the 3,100 grams. Now, when I pour off that oil, um, if I am short a little bit of the infused oil, I will just add some uninfused olive oil into it just to bring it back up to that um, 3,100 grams to make sure I have enough but hopefully by adding that bit extra in I will be okay there. You can see that I need 300 and I'm going to call that 399, 399 I'll round that up a little bit of lye. So down here I am going to put down my lye is 399 and then I am going to be using water 
and I'm going to be using some milk in this as well. I like to do at least a one for one water to lye ratio um, and I also like to kind of round off these sort of figures here to make it that little bit easier for me calculating wise. What I'm going to do because I need 868 of liquid I'm actually going to call that um, 418 which will then leave me 450 for milk. So I'm going to have a little bit more milk than I am going to have water in this um, recipe, but I'm also going to have more water than I have lye. And I always like to have, even though you can go exactly one for one, so 399 water, I like to use that little bit more because that heat does generate steam and you lose a little bit of water. So I like to go up a little bit. All right, so now that I've worked all that out, let's grab the scales back. Oh, I've got oil everywhere. So the first thing I'm going to add into my lye container here, we'll tear it out. I'm going to put in my 418 grams of water. Now normally I would add some tassar silk in here, um, which will add slip and glide to the soap bar. But because this soap is just a pure olive oil soap, which is nice and gentle and smooth anyway, and I'm also adding milk in, which will give it that extra super fat. I don't think this needs that tussar silk this time. And that will actually then make this bar a palm-free and vegan-friendly soap. Now, even though my tussar silk is responsibly sourced and the animals aren't harmed to get it, it's still not classified as being truly vegan. So we've got our water in there. It's time to add the lye in as well. Right, so let's get our lye in here. I've teared that back out. Now I do weigh my lye straight into the bucket, but if you're not confident doing that, weigh it into a separate container and then tip it into your water. But make sure you don't have any splashing when you do it because you don't want this to burn you when it, if it splashes up. All right, so now that I have got that in there, I'm going to give it a bit of a stir. I do have my window open up here, so all the fumes will go out that way. Because this is pretty much a one for lot one sort of ratio, I do find it needs a little bit more of a stir than what my others do, just to make sure that none of the lye settles on the bottom of the container and that it is all melting into that water. And that is feeling really good. You can actually feel it on the spatula as you're wiping it across the bottom if there's any stuck. But that is feeling really good. So I am going to put my clip lock on there so that nobody will spill that one. Now with my milk, I will be adding in some oat milk. And I like to add my liquid milks like this in um, before we get to trace. I never ever mix it with the lye water because I don't want it to scorch, I don't want that burnt smell, I don't want that caramelised colour. So I will weigh this out when we are ready to make the actual soap. So while the oils and lye are doing their thing, I'm also going to line my soap mould so I know it is ready to go. Now I'm doing this in a slab mould today because this soap takes so long to cure, I want to get as many soaps done as possible. And then um, once I'm about halfway through curing this one, I will probably actually make another one. What I'm going to do is grab my greaseproof paper. Now here in Australia, we don't get the freezer paper that you tend to get in America. I use this silicon baking paper and it's as close as we can get to freezer paper of the same quality without it costing us a mortgage on our homes. So I'm going to grab a piece, making sure that it covers my entire mold and down the sides and I'm going to rip that off. All right, so now that I have got my piece of paper, I'm going to make sure it is centered. So I've, as I fold this down, this comes down all of the sides. And the first thing I am going to do is my markings for my loaves go this way. I'm actually going to turn my mold around. I just like to line it this way. So now that I've got this pulled tight across here, I'm going to run my finger along the inner edge of my mold on that side, making sure that my paper doesn't move. I'm going to do the same on this side. Whoop. Just run my finger down there, do it twice. I'm going to slide my mold out, flip my paper over, and where I've done those two score lines, I'm going to fold my paper over. 
and then hopefully oh there it is now when we grab our mold back over this way we should now be that our paper will sit in there nicely now rather than trying to do the same thing on that side all I now do is I fold this end in making sure there is enough paper here that it's actually going to sit up the side of my mold so let me get that folded and we'll crease that piece grab the mold I slide this in and I butt that end up to the end of my mold and then I simply push this one over push it in tight and fold it down so I start to create my crease line pull it back out the mold and finish creasing that in so now a piece of paper should sit nicely in the bottom of our mold now to get it up the sides the best way I have found I kind of pull this back and I grab a pair of scissors and where this fold line is down the side here I cut straight down to the top of the wood on each of these sides so let me get that one and this last side done so now that I've got that done I pick up this piece of paper and as I fold it back this piece in here will naturally form that little V shape and I push it up and over now I always have trouble taping my paper to my moulds, it just doesn't seem to want to work, probably because of the silicon. So I just grab some little thumbtacks, this is made with a marine ply so it's nice and soft and they just push into my wood mould. Let's turn it around, so I'm going to do the same again on this side, I'm going to pull that piece up and as I pull it up, these flaps in here will fold in creating that little V shape. And then I just push them up and over and you'll be able to really smooth out those edges as you go let's put our thumbtacks in this side as well I use thumbtacks just because it is it doesn't get in my way as I said it doesn't um, the sticky tape never sticks for me but I find that the thumbtacks just don't get in my way my paper stays up nice and straight and I can hold it nice and tight in there as well so oh, that one obviously wasn't stuck in very well let's get that one pushed back in there so I'm going to put, I need to actually get myself another two thumbtacks to do my sides with but that will do for now so flip that one round and pop that one in and now our slab mold is all perfectly lined and ready to go all right, so this is now ready to do the next step. So I let that sit overnight to cool down and to finish infusing. I actually then did get rather busy that day, so I left it for another whole day of just sitting here. And now it's time to get this strained out so we get rid of all these bits of calendula because I don't want any scratchy bits in this soap because it is aimed at people with sensitive skin. So let me just grab my big pot. Now this is my big slab mold pot here. I've already teared it off in the scale so I know oop, how much that weighs. I don't want to lose my spatula in there but I also don't want to get oil everywhere. So you see a lot of people when they do um, the straining of their botanicals they use cheesecloth or they use um, a nut bag or something. Now what I prefer to use is I just use a clean kitchen cloth and that is because once the oil's gone through here, it's just too hard to actually clean all those oils out of the cloth. I don't want it all going down my drain. So this way I can actually um, pour it through here. It works exactly the same and then just throw away that cloth and I don't get oil through my washing machine or down my sink or anything like that. So what I'm gonna do is just very gently pour this in. So I've lined my sieve with that dishcloth and now I'm just going to pour this in, making sure I don't pour too much that it overflows and just letting it gently sieve on through there. And that blue cloth will actually catch all the finer pieces of the calendula that the sieve won't catch. All right, so I have got all of the oil poured out. I'm just going to very gently push on the top of here 
to get any more of that excess oil. It's looking good. And now all I'm going to do is gather up my thing and then just give it a good squeeze to get all of that oil out of there. Alright, so that's had a really good squeeze. I've got as much of the oil out of those botanicals as I possibly can. Now don't worry, I have actually got a soap in mind where I am going to put these actually into the soap to create that sort of gentle exfoliation. So I'm going to keep those to one side for my next soap. Alright, so the next thing to do is to go and weigh this and see how much oil I got. I can see I had a little escapee, two little escapees in my oil here so I'm just going to get those two pieces out see how much oil we've got and see if I need to top it up any all right so I've just weighed that I was missing about 120 grams of oil so I have added that in here and we are now ready to start making soap all right so let's start looking at what we have got to go in here so we've got our lye water solution I have got my milk all measured out I am also going to be adding in some colloidal oatmeal powder, which I'm going to put straight into my oils now. I'm not adding any fragrance into this because, again, I want this to be nice and gentle for people with sensitive skin. But what I am going to add in, this is some sodium lactate. I'm going to put that into my lye water solution, and that will help to harden up these bars. So to because olive oil soap does take so long to um, cure, I've used that heavy water discount and this sodium lactate should help push it along as well. So we are now ready to get into the whole processes of making this soap and everything else from here is pretty much straightforward. I'm going to mix in this oatmeal, I'm going to pour my milk in, then I'm going to pour my sodium hydroxide solution in and then we're going to get it into that nice big slab mould. Now pure olive oil soap takes a long time to trace. Now if you look at my stick blender and see how it is all just running off there and it doesn't seem to stick or hold itself together, I know that this still has not even come to emulsion at this stage. Alright, so we are now up to a light trace, bordering on getting to that medium trace. I am going to call it quits now because I can feel the motor on my stick blender getting quite warm. And as I have several other soaps I want to make, I actually don't want to burn that motor out. So we are going to pour this into the mold. I prefer to pour a soap like this into my mold at this sort of trace level because I tend to find I am less likely to get the soda ash on it if it's thicker when I pour it. If it's a really thin pour, that tends to be when I get soda ash. To be honest, I don't know what causes it. Um, I don't think there is any sort of magical fix. I have tried everything that people have suggested. Sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't, but I have worked out that it is a lot to do with my trace when I'm pouring. Let me go and grab the mold and we will start getting this one in. So this calendula and oat olive oil soap is now all ready just to sit here and do its thing. I'm going to leave it sit here probably for about two to three days because it will need to firm up quite a bit and being just that olive oil it's going to take a little longer than the normal soaps and then we will come back and we will get this one split and cut into bars. So as you saw, we have cut that slab into our little loaves. This is a very plain and simple soap, but it has that real elegance to it. 
it smells really good even though I've got no fragrance in there you do get that sort of oat smell come through a little bit of that calendula as well really pleased with how it has come together love the color of it as well now one thing I will say so everything I know about olive oil soaps is that it is soft and needs a long time to cure and we did all that stuff to really combat um, how long I will actually have to cure this one for but something I did actually forget is that olive oil does also set up very hard as you can see I can't even get my cutter to go through there so what I'm going to do just gently peel that back off hopefully we don't ruin this too much all right so we got that out of the multi bar cutter I am going to actually do this on the single bar because I really don't want to have to rewire a whole heap of the multi bar cutter but at least this way I do have my lines on here anyway so as I was saying even though olive oil actually is a really soft oil to work with it does also make a really nice hard bar of soap and I completely forgot about that when leaving it to set up so is that going to go all the way through oh dear let's push that down that's it might need to tighten it up a bit more but if you are going to make an olive oil soap, don't leave it sit there for two days before cutting it. I think you have to leave it to sit for two days if you have got it in a silicon mould. But if you've got it in a paper one, as soon as it has actually um, set up and done its thing in the 24 hours, get it out and start cutting. Going to get that. It's probably still not quite tight enough. That sounds better let's keep cutting I can see just how hard this one actually has become so hopefully I'm not gonna have to leave this one sitting here for months <laughs> hopefully it will only take about two months and then this soap will be ready to to um, wrap up and put on the website I am really pleased with how this one has come up it's something that I have wanted to do for, oh, sorry, have wanted to do for a very long time and have always put it off um, just because I've had all these other sort of ideas running through my head that I want to do as well and just figured this one was going to take too long to do. <laughs> and it's actually ended up being nice, quick and easy. What I am going to do with these parts, so I've got two of these loaves which I am going to cut up into my normal style of um, soap. But because um, this sort of soap is often sought after by people who want to use it on baby skin, I have decided that with um, one of those loaves, I'm going to then cut it in half again and we will end up, oh, this one's, I hope you're going to come out. Oh dear. <laughs> As I was saying, I'm going to cut one of these in half so you end up with a nice little bar that's nice and easy to use if you are choosing to use it on a young child's skin so I am going to keep struggling <laughs> to cut this one. Oh my goodness that has absolutely loosened my wire yep definitely don't leave this for two days to cut cut it as within that 24 hours so it, that it's not too hard Alright, so I am going to keep cutting this soap. It's going to take me a little bit longer than most of my soaps usually do because A, it's on the single bar cutter and it is requiring that little bit of extra effort. I hope you have enjoyed watching how I have made my calendula and oat soap. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And until the next video, I hope you have a great one and I'll see you then. Bye.